As long as you know which one's live and then which one's neutral, the third one, well, it's obvious by process of elimination, that's got to be the earth, right? And then as long as you plug it in and it comes on, then you're good to go, surely. Well, yeah, if you want a method for disaster. The thing is, there's people out there that actually think it is that easy. That's how easy it is being an electrician. And yeah, I know electricians have probably got a a bit of a reputation to be perfectionists, but there's a good reason for it. If someone's bodged up your electric, yeah, it might last years and it'll be fine for that amount of time and not cause a problem whatsoever, but it only takes that one time. That one time you might just plug three heaters in, just in the shed for a little while because you want to dry something out. Or the most popular time of the year, Christmas, when you've got everything running at full capacity in that kitchen. And yeah, you could save a fortune by not spending your money on employing an electrician to do the work for you, get DIY down the road to do it for you. But it's that one time it goes wrong. And that one time might kill one life. Toolbox Talks for Electricians, helping electricians reduce stress, gain back time, and earn more money. Hello and welcome back. My name is Ben Poulter, your host of Toolbox Talks for Electricians. And have you ever heard someone say, electrics, I can do electrics, that's easy. And it's always either another tradesman that's probably done a little bit of electrics before, or some sort of cheapskate that, yeah, I employ, I'm not going to employ an electrician because I cost a fortune. And I'll be the first to admit it. Being an electrician, yeah, it is easy. But it's easy for electricians. Exactly the same is that plumbing is easy for plumbers. And building houses is easy for builders. And what worries me is these sort of people with that small amount of knowledge where they worked on an extension with their best mate's dad that his dad knew an electrician years ago. You know what I mean? That type of guy. And it's these people who will say, yeah, I'll give that a go. I reckon I could do that. And they will come around, they'll run a supply to your shed, 2.5, because that's what cable that electricians use. They'll clip it all the way along the fence, lovely and neat, stick a socket in their uh, garage, and then plug one of them square multi-adapters in. They'll plug three more heaters into it. That'll be fine, it comes on. Now, I get it, I've seen it before, where your missus is having a go at you, saying we need another freezer, because we need to freeze some more food. We'll, we'll get a bargain. I've bought a load of fruit, fruit from the superstore and we need to freeze it. So we need another freezer in the shed. Well, yeah, great. Yeah, that freezer in the shed, what's the freezer going to cost? A couple of hundred quid? But it's the, the supplier. It's the supply getting it to the shed. You've got to get a decent supply to the shed to run that freezer because no doubt you're going to put a tumble dryer in there as well. So you might as well upgrade that supply and put a decent supply to the shed. But that's going to cost around 500 quid. And you know this. So when your missus is probably asking you to say, look, I want to put a freezer in the shed. Can't you put a socket in there? Rather than spend that 500 quid to get an electrician to come around and put a supply into it, he'll say, yeah, I'll save myself 500 quid. I'll do it myself. Because if you turn around to your missus and say, look, it's going to cost a small fortune, maybe 500 quid, maybe minimum, to get a supply put into that garage, that because you know that will put her off thinking, no, no, don't spend 500 pounds, put a fridge in there. She'll just think that you're trying to put off to spending the £200 behind the fridge. When the fridge is not the issue, it's the supply getting to the garage that will cost you the issue. So just putting a fridge in the garage will cost you around 700 quid. So this is why the DIY Daves come along and they say, yep, I can do that. I can stick a supply into your garage, nice and easy. They watch a couple of YouTube videos. They might bring their mate up who's a ground worker that's obviously dug around the electrical cable. So he's got a little bit of knowledge and say to him, can I run a supply into my shed? Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. I'll just go down screw fix, get the kit and I'll do it myself. As electricians, you see these type of jobs all the time. Even when you're in someone's house and you say, yeah, hang about this spur that goes off to the bleeding shed. Who done that? I did that myself. The homeowner might say, I'm pretty proud sort of thing. I did that myself. I'm a good job, innit? I could be an electrician. And then you take pride in saying, okay, this could happen. That could happen. You're lucky it ain't caught fire, mate. And the sad thing is that there's so many properties with jobs like this been done in their house. Maybe they've done it themselves or they've got the mate to come down and say, look, let's have a few beers and we'll do a, we'll do a bit of electrical work ourselves." And they might have worked for years. They've been there for years sometimes. You, you, you see it in there like this is all red and black cable. So I know this weren't done sort of lately, but it's dangerous. And I can't leave it like that. 
and you can explain to the customer and say, look, it's, it's, it's pretty dodgy, like you need to do it properly, and this is how much it's going to cost in a way. But they say, no, it's been fine. It might have tripped off a couple of times, but it goes straight back on after the rain's dried out. That's even more worrying. It's when it stops working that you get a call. Think, hang about, there is a problem here. We'll call an electrician. He'll come out and fix it, and it will cost me less because I run half the cable myself. People think, yeah, I can run the cable myself. I can do half the job. Then a sparky will come in and just connect it up. Well, not if you've done it wrong. This is the thing. At least ask a sparky first for a quote because you might be thinking, hang about, you might as well get someone to do it properly and clip it properly and clip it in the right places and the right zones. It's just, there's always a way of doing things properly, not just throwing it in. Because the reason why electricians use a certain size cable, they make it protected by a certain size fuse, is because we know what we're doing. And we don't want it to walk away and then five weeks time or 10 weeks or even the next day for it to cause a fire or even worse, to cause a death. I'm just going to jump in here quickly to say, if you're liking Toolbox Talks for Electricians podcast, leave a like, subscribe to the channel and tick that little bell icon and I'll notify you every time I drop a new video. So let's carry on with the podcast. Because these guys that have done these jobs, have you ever thought what you're going to say when you're standing outside because you've had to call the fire brigade because there's smoke filling up the house and your kids are in bed upstairs? That was the socket that I did. You're not going to say that, are you? You're going to act oblivious. But I guarantee you, these firemen will find out straight away saying, yep, it's this socket, it overheated, caused fire and uh, basically there's dead bodies in there. And you can guarantee that your missus will turn around and get you slapped around the head, if not leave you. But the worst thing of all is to think you didn't want to get that job done properly. You didn't want to fork out £500. Now your house is up in flames. <laughs> You've got a claim on your house insurance. And it's a lot more hassle. If anyone if anyone died, even if your dog died, your hamster got burnt to a cinder, you've got to live with that, thinking, through my fault or through my being a tight git, I've hurt somebody and I've got to live with that. I can't stress enough why electricians go to college why any trade actually goes to college to learn something to learn a skill how to do it how to do it professionally to start with but how to do it safely is the main thing like plumbers with gas they learn how to test gas to make sure it's not leaking electricians they learn how to test a installation so they can walk away and leave it you can't just throw it together it doesn't work like that sometimes yes you can change a socket but it's a better idea if you're not 100% confident to get an electrician to change a socket because he can stick his tester in. Which, yes, his tester will cost around a grand and that will test that that installation is spot on and it's not going to go wrong. So I suppose this is where Part P is a good thing for cons- um, customers that you work in people's houses because they've got the confidence in to know that you have been to college, you have got a qualification, you have done some sort of training in the industry to be able to do it professionally and to do it safely. And to be honest though, not that any customers have actually asked to see my Part P card, because they never do. You, you want to show them it because you've paid obviously a fortune for it a year, and they, they never ask to see it, they never ask, are you Part P registered, are you, are you qualified? Sort of, they get confident when you... You know what you're talking about when you explain to them how you're going to do it or what you can do and what can be done safely. That That's where you feel the customer confidence, I think. I think these days in 2024, that piece of paper with your sitting guilds qualification is worth a lot more than what it used to be back in the day. A lot of people, they don't ask for your qualification. If you can do the job, yep, crack on and get it done. But if you want to go for a job as an electrician these days, you 100% will need to show them your qualifications. And again, if you're going to get assessed for Part P, you need to show that assessor your qualifications. And these qualifications, they prove that you know what you're talking about. They prove that you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Like just today, I went to look at a job for an elderly lady. She was about 87. And she said, I just want a socket in my bedroom. Well, I thought, yeah, that's not a problem. It's a bungalow. I can shove a socket in your bedroom. That's easy. But then I went to look at the board. The board has got no RCD, it's the old Wilux fuses, and I explained that possibly there's going to incur some extra costs, maybe put a little board on the side, like a sub board, or upgrade the whole board, because the property is basically in need of it. But then, also, I did possibly recommend 
doing a whole test. You need to test this whole supply to see if, if it is up to scratch because if I change the board and my RCBOs keep trip, trip, tripping, it's going to be a nightmare. So just for one socket, she was looking at around a grand, which I understand why some customers think electricians are a bleeding ripoff. I didn't do the job in the end. I didn't do a socket. She's went and got an extension lead and stuck it in a drawer next to the bed so she can have a socket next to her bed, which is fine. The extension lead will be fine. But still, I, there's nothing I could do. I can't. I could have just went and gone and threw a socket in and said, Look, there you go. She's an old girl. I'll put a socket in for her, buy a bed. But then I'd go home thinking, hang about, that's not RCD protected. I wouldn't be covered by any insurance because I didn't do the job to the regulations of what the standards are now. So you just can't do it. And rather than waste anyone's time, I explained this to her and said, look, do, do you want to get it done or not? Do you want me to give you a quote maybe? She said, no, don't bother. She's not interested in spending that amount of money. All she wanted was a double socket by a bed. So unfortunately, she didn't get that double socket that day. But... You need to do things properly. I can walk away from there thinking, yeah, I haven't just thrown a double socket in for her or done anything dodgy. Or basically, I haven't put the socket in and said, right, I can't live it up to you, change your board. I didn't, because I think that would be, in effect, a rip-off poor person. I need to tell her everything this entailed to get that socket on and live. But with the people and tightening their budgets, how the economy is at the minute, there's so many people that have possibly lost their job. And there'll be people that have started up on their own and they might do their own little business where they go and do a bit of DIY, a bit of gardening jobs. And if she mentions to someone that she wants a socket next to her bed, I can guarantee you, someone's going to go, yep, I can do that for 50 quid. Which when you're going out and starting your own business, fantastic, you're doing the odd jobs, maybe a bit of painting, decorating, gardening, which is fine. But the jobs like gas is involved or electric is involved, have your limits you do not touch them because if you hurt someone you're not going to be covered by your insurance because you're not qualified to do that job and i'll be honest i appreciate a customer giving it a go they might have got a new light from down at dunnell mills and thought right we're going to chuck a light up for you i can do that over the weekend and they give it a go but unfortunately they mess it up and then they think right i've got to call an electrician so they go through the um the google maybe and they go and get the, the local electrician to come around and fit a light. But the electrician goes around there, someone like myself, and says, has anyone touched this? Has anyone sort of had a go? Nah, it's fine. It worked yesterday. This happened to myself. I went into a customer's house, and they said, yes, this light in the ceiling, they'd stuck up, well, someone, there was a light on the ceiling, basically. It was there. And they said, yeah, it worked. It worked a few days ago. It just stopped working all of a sudden. I said, okay, not a problem. Got my steps out, got my kit out. I thought I'd take the light down. Let's test at the light, see if there is any wiring to start with. So I took the light down, and there was wiring, but then I pulled it, and it comes straight out the ceiling. And you could tell that that hadn't been connected to anything because the other end of the cable had cobwebs, it was dirty. You could just tell. It, you, it wasn't come out hard enough for me to pull out of a junction box. It just fell out the ceiling. So I said, excuse me, did this actually work a few days ago yes definitely worked a few days ago well from then on i knew that customer was lying to me so i put the light back up said i've got to get something from my van no worries see you later didn't go back if you're gonna lie to me yeah it's not gonna work out because then you're gonna lie saying i broke it or anything can happen it's not worth my time i'd rather if i go around a customer's house and they say to me i give it a go myself I tried, but I couldn't do it. So I've messed all the word. They're switching up or something like that. And all the other lights don't work now. So can you please help me out? If I know what's happened, it's easier for me to fix. But if I don't know, then I've got to, got to work out what's happened first. I've got to work out what someone's done. Because it's not always about just being able to do the job. Yes, I admit a lot of people can change a socket. But what if it's not tight? What if you get the polarity around the wrong way? And not everyone has a little plug-in tester. Not everyone has a little multimeter. Not everyone has a tester to check that it's all tight and secure and it's going to last forever. Because people do. They get their kitchen done and they think, oh, I've seen these for a pound, these chrome-plated sockets in um, Poundland or something. I'll get a load of them. And they go and stick them on. And they wonder why they don't work like a few weeks later. Because maybe you haven't screwed them in right or you've cross-threaded the, f the screw in the socket and end of the day, the screws are pretty rubbish anyway. 
So, yeah, and it's when it's in the, it's always in the kitchen where people plug their heavy appliances into, like toasters, like kettles. So they pull a lot of current, and they wonder why they've got a burn mark around the neutral. Because the socket can't handle it. It's rubbish. It's, it's, it's for a toy box. This is the thing sometimes. These sockets, yes, they're made for the British standard and they're on sale. But so many of them, they, they, they just burn out. So that is why install decent quality double pole switched double sockets, even if they're decorative as well, which, yes, they do cost around 10, 12 quid a piece. So with customers, when you meet a customer, a lot of the time, I'm a chatterbox. I chatter away to a customer and I could tell them exactly how I've done it, why I've done it, what's wrong, why I've replaced it, or maybe if you take a socket off, you think, let me know now, did you change any more sockets? Because it's not just this one that doesn't work, is it? Yeah, okay, I did four more. Okay, right, let's have a bit of a a relationship to say that you trust me and I want to fix these sockets because I'm going to charge you for them as well because you've you've knackered them all up and you haven't done them all tight. So then you get a bit of a relationship for these customers. And yes, some of them do become friends. And these friends, they support you and your business. So at this time of year, when the spirits are high, Christmas has just happened and everyone's in high spirits, it's a good time of year to maybe blast out an email to these customers that have become friends with a subtle mention about your business and how it's thriving and how you're getting on in 2024, but then a subtle mention as well to say, would you mind sharing my business page or my business with your friends and family? And because you've got such a good relationship with them, I'm sure that they'll be happy to help you out. There's a template for this email inside of the Toolbox Talks for Electricians group on Facebook, or alternatively, you can email Toolbox Talking at gmail.com and I'll be happy and I'll be happy to forward you the email over and this will help you generate more work and get busier and busier in 2024 so until next time I'll see you again